What is up guys? Today we are going in depth on some Chimera. Let's get right into it. First of all, before we get started, this is part number two. I guess technically it is part number one, but we did do a deck profile previous to this video. And that video did cover the price, the deck profile itself, prosperity versus super poly if you choose to do one or the other i mean you can always side in super poly or something like that what the cards do and then there was like a single combo a single one card combo this video is going to be way more in depth and keep in mind the last video and this video will have timestamps in the description so if you're looking for a particular thing go check that out let's go into the first part which will be one and two card combos now the first one card combo is going to come down to your branded line, which fortunately does lead directly into your Chimera line and could potentially even be better for a couple reasons. One, it's another body on board and does give you access to Mirror Jade if you're going second. And two, if you start with both, which we will cover that, but if you do start with like branded fusion and your starters for the Chimera line, get rid of an Ash or something like that by doing branded fusion. If you don't have a cross out or if you do have a cross out, you could save it for like Droll or something like that or just cross out, let branded fusion go through and run the risk of something else happening in the future but let's go ahead and play branded fusion branded fusion as everyone it knows at this point will lead directly into mirror jade and the way to get there is through lubelion or albion but we're going to get a little bit spicier and we are actually going to go into rindbrum if you want to like make like insane plays have a negate on board have more bodies so on and so forth rindbrum's probably the way to go but there are situations where a mirror jade would definitely come in handy but for the sake of the video we are going to go into rindbrum and the way we are going to do that is Branded Fusion is going to activate. We are going to fuse a Gazelle and a Fallen of Albaz from the deck. Most people, when they see Branded Fusion, they will immediately Ash it. There's no, they cannot, if they have an Ash, they can't let this go through unless they're just a 500 IQ duelist or something like that and know your deck very, very, very well. But regardless, let's keep it going. We are going to use these two cards to summon out our copy of Rindbrum. So Rindbrum, he he requires a Fallen of Albaz and one Beast, Beast Warrior, or Winged Beast Monster, which we use with Gazelle, or Fulfilled, I should say, with Gazelle. And then he does offer Interruption. He does have a Negate and then return one monster from the field to the hand when an Extra Deck monster activates their effect. Not specifically Extra Deck, but Fusion, Synchro, Ixie, or Link. He can negate it and then return one monster on the field to the hand. It can even be your own. And then he also has a graveyard effect, which is really good. He can, since we use Branded Fusion and got a Fallen of Albaz in Grave, his graveyard effect is while he's in the grave, he can target a Fallen of Albaz, and then he can special summon one of these two and then banish the other. So you could choose Albaz and then Albaz normal summon effect or special summon to fuse away an opponent's monster. And if it was an extra deck monster, that is a free Mirror Jade, or you can bring him back for some additional interruption in the form of a negate, which in turn leads to returning an opponent's card to the hand but the main reason why we want to go into him he's a great card in general by himself but the main reason we want to go into him is so gazelle can activate and dig us deeper into our engines when gazelle is used as fusion material he then has a trigger effect and his trigger effect is if this card is sent to the graveyard not from the field just to the graveyard in general as material for a fusion summon you can add one illusion monster from your deck to your hand so we're going to activate his effect on the resolution of this rindrum summon and grab ourselves a Kotal if we don't have Kotal in the grave or in hand or a Mirror Sword Knight if we don't have Mirror Sword Knight in the hand or grave and if we have neither probably a Kotal because we do want the protection of Kotal to be in the grave and aside from Kotal's protection in the grave and disruption I guess you could call it Mirror Sword Knight is also a target for Albion so it'd probably be good to keep at least one Mirror Sword Knight in the deck at least for now because we don't know what's happening with the match at this point so we're going to grab ourselves a Kotal Kotal's going to discard to add Mirror Sword Knight anyway but we do want a copy of Kotal in the graveyard because Kotal is the banish to negate and destroy if a Carter effect targets a card you control while you control a Chimera the Flying Mythical Beast 
which would be either of these two cards. And that is definitely where we want to end up. So it's good to have a copy of him in the grave. So now that he's in hand, we're just going to discard him to add the Mirror Sword Knight. I'm going to go ahead, grab us a copy of Mirror Sword Knight and normal Mirror Sword Knight. Normal summoning does not start a chain, so you do have priority to immediately activate his effect if you want. Or you can pass priority to your opponent and see what they do. Maybe they want to imperm him or something. I don't know. But it is what it is. So next up in the line is going to be activate Mirror Sword Knight. He does tribute himself for cost. And what he will do is special summon out a card that lists Chimera Fusion except himself which will be our copy of Big Winged Burfamet. We're going to activate Big Winged Burfamet's effect, and this is most likely where you're going to get hand trapped if they have a hand trap in their hand, but at least we are not completely just dead in the water. We do have some stuff on field, so if you don't have a cross out or something, or let's say you already used it, and they hand trap you here, it you know, it's kind of okay, it's kind of fine, you have other cards in hand, but let's say you have a cross out or they don't hand trap you. What he's gonna do is he's going to add a Chimera Fusion, and or a level four beast. We're gonna grab both of these actually. Then we're going to immediately activate Chimera Fusion. Chimera Fusion is a quick play, keep that in mind, and it also recycles itself. It's just a great card in general. We're gonna activate Chimera Fusion and use Gazelle and Big Wing Burfamet to fuse into Chimera the King. Now we have some trigger effects that can happen. We already used Gazelle's effect on the Rindbrim summon, but we can activate Big Wing Burfamet Chain Link 1 targeting Mirror Sword Knight, and then Chain Link 2 activate Chimera the King of Phantom Beast to rip a card during the end phase, which is absolutely amazing because let's say they ash you and you cross out or something like that, and then so they're down a card, now they have four cards in hand. You rip another one, now they have three cards in hand. If you have a talent in your hand, you play that, now they have two cards in hand, and it's just crazy. It can lead to your opponent not having much to start with. So resolving backwards, now we get to rip during the end phase. Keep that in mind, don't forget. I forget all the time. Do not forget that. And Mirror Sword Knight will be special summoned. And since we control Chimera, the Flying Mythical Beast, that's what this guy's name is considered, we can go ahead and activate Chimera Fusion to add back. Then we set one card and pass. And then what a lot of Chimera players like to do is in the draw phase, actually activate Mirror Sword Knight, or let's say you ended somewhere like that, for example, and then they, I don't know, they did something to you to where you can't activate his effect. You can just pass and as soon as they draw, then activate his effect and do all your other things. You still have Chimera Fusion set. So you can end, quote unquote, on like the exact same way. But for the sake of this, we are right here. Activate his effect in the draw phase and special summon out your second copy of Big Wing Burfamet and then go ahead and add yourself on Big Wing Burfamet's effect, a Chimera Fusion and another Gazelle. So we now have two cards in hand plus the four unknown cards and this is our board. Guardian Chimera is definitely available to us at any point in which we choose. But before then, we do have a Kotal Engrave for an interruption. If they target, we can negate and destroy whatever card they used that targeted one of our monsters. And then a Mirror Sword Knight to just negate a monster effect. Now let's go into our Chimera line. Which is, it's, I showed this exact same line that I'm about to do in the last video, the deck profile video. But just in case you're not interested in a deck profile, you already got the deck set up. Let me go ahead and show that to you right quick. This is going to be a line that starts with just Kotal. It's just the standard basic Chimera line that everybody has showcased on their channel, except me, so I will do it now. Kornfeld Kotal. We're going to discard him to search ourselves a card that lists Chimera Fusion. Monster, I should say, it's just a monster going to add the Mirror Sword Knight. Normal summon the Mirror Sword Knight and then activate his effect to special summon one monster from the deck that mentions Chimera Fusion, which will be Big Wing Burfamet. Now we're gonna activate Burfamet's effect and add ourselves a Gazelle and a Chimera Fusion from our deck to our hand. It's pretty much the same as the branded line, but you don't end on as nice of a board, but you still do end on a pretty good board. Activate Chimera Fusion use gazelle and big winged from hand and field to go ahead and special out a chimera the king of phantom beast now we have chain links once again we're going to do chain link one gazelle which will let us search an illusion monster chain link two targeting mirror sword knight to special summon and then chimera chain link three to rip a card during the end phase Resolving backwards, now we get to rip a card during the end phase. Mirror Sword Knight, or I'm sorry, Mirror Sword Knight, the target of Big Wing Burfamet, is now in play. And we are going to search ourselves something that we are missing. As far as illusion monsters go, we have Kotal Engrave. So if we didn't start with Kotal, if we started with Mirror Sword Knight instead, we'd want to search Kotal. 
and now we can pretty much search either one. So I'm gonna go ahead and add myself a Mirror Sword Knight. We don't want to, but I'm going to add him just in case it comes up where we end up needing a light monster. For Albion, I really hope it doesn't come up and you really don't want to do that, but it is good just to have. But either one would work and they both have their pros and cons. We're going to add that to hand, activate Chimera Fusion to add back, and then set Chimera Fusion. Now pass to your opponent and your opponent can, you know, draw. Once they draw, if you want, you can activate Mirror Sword Knight and do the same loop once again. Grab the Burfamet. Burfamet effect is going to add us a Gazelle and a Chimera Fusion to hand. And then when you think the time is right, you can Chimera Fusion and fuse either one of these and then both of these for Guardian Chimera. Or if you're facing like Unchained or something, you leave Guardian Chimera in the extra deck because you definitely don't want to pop a bunch of stuff and make their life easier. Or the last option would be to fuse and summon into this guy, which he's usually only summoned and brought out if you want to like go for game or something like that. He is really good at pushing for game and definitely really good in the OTK, but he is an option. But so whatever you choose, it doesn't matter because you did fuse away Big Wing Burr from it. You're gonna activate his effect, target Mirror Sword Knight and bring out Mirror Sword Knight. The only downside to that is now you don't have the Mirror Sword Knight protection effect for it when he's in the grave if you banish him, but it is all fine and dandy. I just wanted to show you what you could do. And now at this point, your opponent hasn't done pretty much anything and you have these three cards and four mystery cards in your hand. That is the basic combo and starting for the Chimera line. Now let's go into, let's say you start with both lines. Okay, now let's say you start with both. Let's say you start with Branded Fusion and Mirror Sword Knight or Cornfield Kotal. For sake of the demonstration, we will just do Kotal. But what happens when you start with both of these? You have a cross out or something like that, or your opponent just doesn't have any interruptions for you. Let's do the Branded line first. We're gonna do Branded Fusion, which obviously is going to take us into a Fallen of Albaz. Then we're going to choose a Light Monster or a Dark Monster. In this case, we're gonna choose a Mirror Sword Knight. We do run three, so that is definitely good. But the main reason why we are choosing Mirror Sword Knight right now is because Lubelion does require a discard in order to activate his effect. And our only other card is a Kotal, which we need. We don't want to discard it. So that being said, we're going to choose Albion instead. And unfortunately, we don't have any other light monsters. So let's fuse these guys away for our Albion. Now we're going to activate our Albion's effect, which will let us banish Fallen Albaz and himself to get us out a Mirror Jade. Pretty beefy boy on the field. That is a different way to go down the branded line. I did mention it in the previous combo, but now we get to hit our Chimera line. Activate Kotal. That is going to grab us a Mirror Sword Knight. Normal Mirror Sword Knight. Tribute himself as cost to special out a Burfamet. Activate Burfmet's effect to add us a Gazelle and Chimera Fusion. Activate Chimera Fusion, fusing both of these guys together. Now our hand is empty. Well, I guess technically there are three unknown cards in it still. But who we are fusing for is Chimera, the King of Phantom Beasts. And once again, now we have Chain Links. We're going to do Chain Link 1, targeting Mirror Sword Knight. Chain Link 1, Big Wing Burfmet, targeting Mirror Sword Knight to Reborn. Chain Link 2 will be Gazelle to add an illusion monster from deck to hand. And Chain Link 3 will be Chimera to rip during the end phase. Now resolving backwards, Chimera, now we get to rip during the end phase. Gazelle, which is going to add us pr probably whoever we have the least amount of, but let's do a Kotal because I like the banish to negate destroy. It does have to target, but I like the destruction part of it, so we're gonna add that. And then Burfamet to special summon a Mirror Sword Knight. Now we activate Chimera Fusion's effect in Grave, add that to hand, set it, and pass. Lot more interruption with Mirror Jade on the field and whatnot. Still have both of our protection in the grave. We have a Mirror Sword Knight that can tribute himself whenever we want, including the draw phase. And then we have a Chimera Fusion to go into Guardian Chimera with this Cornfield Kotal as well, whenever we want. Pretty solid if you open both of those. But what happens when you're going second and you want to get an OTK off? I bring that up now because it's very similar to the first one we did, the pure Chimera line. The only difference is you need one other monster and that other monster could be Fenrir. It could be, let's say we get out uh, Mirror Jade, of course, could definitely be one. Just Renbrum by himself could be one. Magnum the Reliever could be one. Basically anybody with 1800 attack or more will get us to the OTK. So that's just something I want you to keep in mind but it's basically the first line just a little bit different and i suppose i do have to do a disclaimer here it entirely depends on what your opponent's board is let's say you evenly everything but a mirror jade or a fenrir or 
a baron or something like that and then you imperm that or this or that or do whatever you have to do to where they don't have any interruptions. Keep in mind, you have six cards in hand at this point, you are going second. And to keep it super easy, what we're going to start with is let's just say a Kotal. Let's say they have a Fenrir on the field and since we run Fenrir, you just cross out a Fenrir. It doesn't truly matter, but this is where your tech cards really come into play. Use your tech cards, it makes up most of the deck. Book of Moon things, I don't know, do whatever you have to do. All right, but let's just, just for the sake of easiness, we're gonna start with a Fenrir. But as I said, it could be any monster with 1800 or more attack or even less depending on what's on their field that you're actually attacking so special fin rear and then go down the line for chimera discard kotal to add a mirror sword knight normal mirror sword knight activate his effect to special summon a big winged burfamet big winged burfamet's effect to add chimera fusion and gazelle activate chimera fusion fusing these guys off for our chimera king of phantom beast now we go down the line chain link one big wing birth met target mirror sword knight chain link two gazelle to add an illusion monster and chain link three chimera king of phantom beast just in case it comes up and to block these other two guys into the chain resolving backwards now we get to rip gazelle's gonna add an illusion let's just add for simplicity let's just add another kotal and then gazelle's target will special summon we will choose Mirror Sword Knight. Now we have Kotal in hand. Activate Chimera Fusion to add. Activate Chimera Fusion again. We're going to fuse this Illusion Monster, this Illusion Monster, and a Chimera King of Phantom Beast, whose name is currently being treated as Chimera the Flying Mythical Beast, into this guy. Now we have three attacks with him, so if they have a monster with like 10,000 attack, it does not matter. We're going to attack with this guy into anyone. It could be literally any card. Now its attack is zero. After that first attack goes through, now its attack is zero and its effects are permanently negated. And it cannot be destroyed, and this card cannot be destroyed by battle because this is an illusion monster. Now we will attack the same target again, deal 3,100 damage, attack it one more time, deal 3,100 damage again, and then Fenrir into that monster who now has zero attack to destroy it and win the game short sweet simple but I feel like I should show you guys this because a lot of people are saying this guy never gets brought out and yada 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 and if you're playing chimera and not bringing this dude out the permanent attack going to zero and permanent effect negation is absolutely insane I don't know why you wouldn't bring him out but it is what it is just wanted to quickly show you guys that on to the next part which is what to banish off of prosperity so this is our extra deck. We have our Chimera package, our Branded package, and our tech card slash situational cards right here. And if you're playing Super Poly in the main deck or side deck, these two cards here will be substituted for Link Karibo and Zeus. So either way, it doesn't really matter what we're doing as far as that goes. But let's talk about it. If Super Poly is not in your deck, or if you have not sighted it in, these two can obviously go. And if you're running just pure prosperity and that's it, these two guys can go. So there's two right there, and number three would definitely have to be Titan Clad. He does come in clutch pretty hard sometimes, but right now what would come in clutch is cards we can actually use. So that will be three. Three is very easy. Now, what if you want to do six? If you're facing Unchained, for example, your Guardian Chimeras can go. You're going to make their life a lot easier if you pop a bunch of their cards. So those two can go, but let's say you're not facing Unchained, you're facing literally almost any other deck we can definitely at least get rid of one of them one magnum the reliever he he i mean it's all situational it depends on what you're facing and all that but you guys understand that and know that i'm just saying what i would do but magnum the reliever does make five once again he can come in clutch but right now what would come in clutch is a card you can actually play or maybe you're digging for an evenly or something i do that all the time i'll prosperity and dig for stuff like i have full combo in my hand but i would like to dig for an evenly or an imperm or i don't know a book of moon anything i would like to dig for something i do that non-stop and then the sixth slot is really up to you it could be one of these you don't really want to banish your materials if you don't have to so albion's a good choice right here but lubelion does require a discard so keep that in mind when choosing one of these what i do 99 percent of the time is do one mirror jade or i could do albalinatus it doesn't really matter i do like to keep two cards at least that mention fallen and albaz that aren't in the main combo like renbrum so at least two of these or if i got rid of like lubelion Leon, for example i could keep him in or you can just skip all that stuff and just do a mirror jade instead you're probably never going to go into two mirror jades and if you do it's probably through fallen albaz and not branded fusion or both or something like that if you go into the second one but as far as banishing for prosperity that's what i would do so the way i actually set up my extra deck i have it set up a little bit differently right now the way i set it up is 
I set up like this. I do Chimera the Illusion Beast. I do the two Chimera the Kings, two Guardian Chimeras. The order of importance in the branded package is what I do there. And then down here, I automatically have six. And then the bottom three being the least important. So if I'm going for six, I'll probably take one Guardian Chimera out right here and then just do the top five off my extra deck if it's sitting like that. But if it's like first game, I don't know what I'm playing. I'm going first or second and they set two or something like that and I play Prosperity. I don't even look at it, I just top three. Or if my hand is super bad, I'll do top five and then grab a Guardian Chimera and do it like that. Well, obviously I don't wanna show them, but do it like that. And then it will be revealed what you're facing and you're still left with your good Chimera cards that really, you know, you really need. Two copies just in case. One Guardian Chimera, the entire branded package of stuff that's like super relevant to your combos. And what's banished is more like tech cards and stuff that doesn't really come up or probably won't come up. Like I said, I've never gone into the second Guardian Chimera. Never used Link Karibo. I've used him once, but I didn't resolve it correctly as far, I mean, I resolved it correctly, but not in a way that gained me any sort of massive benefit. Uh, Zeus has come up a bunch actually. Like to the point where I thought about moving him like further up the extra deck so I can like keep a copy of him. He comes in clutch so much. If they're playing a deck that Ixie summons, like keep this guy in it. I mean, it doesn't matter. But 99% of you watching aren't running Zeus at all. So whatever is in this spot, you can get rid of. But that's the way I do it for the deck profile that I have built. Now we're going to move on to the final part. I'm gonna have to adjust the lighting camera a little bit. That will be test hands. Let's see what you can reasonably expect from this deck. Let's get straight to it. All right, time for the last section of the video, which is test hands. I'll probably do two. I might do three, I don't know. We will see how long it takes, but I'm gonna shuffle this up on camera for you guys. Give it some cuts down the middle. Pass it to you to cut. You choose to cut it here, that's fine. Bring it back, let's look at our hand. Starting off extremely strong, actually. We had a Burfamet, two Codals, a Brain Infusion, and a Gazelle, King of Mythical Claws. So we're starting off super well. Let's get some hand traps out of the way. Let's just go ahead, stand by main phase, activate Brain Infusion. They're obviously going to ash it or do whatever they can. That way that does not resolve. But for the sake of this video, let's say it does. Branded Fusion, keep that on field, I suppose. We're going to grab ourselves the boy himself, if I can find any. Fallen of Albaz, and let's do a Beast Monster. Now we're going to bring out our Rendbrum. That opens us up to Gazelle's Effect. We'll activate Gazelle's Effect. Looks like what we're missing is a Chimera Fusion. So let's add another one of those. We have access to it here in a second, but it is fine regardless. We'll discard Kotal, activate his effect. Grab ourselves a Mirror Sword Knight. Normal Mirror Sword Knight effect. Special the, if I can find him, big winged from the deck. Let's just get cards out into play. Keep in mind, Mirror Sword Knight does have to be from the deck. So if we happen to open both big winged burf meds, preferably we don't open any, but if we happen to open both, we're kind of screwed there. But we will activate burf meds effect and add ourselves, we might as well add. The cool thing is, is if we got negated there, like impermed or anything, we already have everything we need in our hand. But let's thin the deck a little bit. Go ahead and grab ourselves another Chimera Fusion and another Gazelle. Now we're going to activate Chimera Fusion. We will fuse off our Gazelle and our Big Wing Burfamet. And we could just do both from hand if we really wanted to and keep an extra body on field, but I'm gonna do that one from the field. No particular reasoning for that to get us our copy of Chimera the King of Phantom Beasts. Now we have some chain links. We'll do chain link one. Gazelle's already used this effect off the Renbrum summon. So we'll do chain link one, big wing Burfamet, target mirror sword knight, chain link two, Gazelle to rip during the end phase. Resolving backwards, now we get to rip during the end phase and big wing Burfamet targeted our mirror sword knight. So we're going to special summon that out. Oops, didn't want to mean to change the order of the graveyard there, but it is fine. It's just us, so it is totally okay. Kotal's already been activated this turn, and we really have nothing else we can do. But what we will do is activate Chimera Fusion to add back. So we have two copies in hand, but our opponent does not know that. Set one of the copies and pass. It's a pretty solid board. We get to rip one of the cards from their hand during the end phase. We have some disruption here with the Rindrum if they have an extra deck monster on the field, and then we have 
a Kotal in Grave, and then in their draw phase, or whenever we want, we can activate Mirror Sword Knight and go through his whole thing again, and then we'll have a Mirror Sword Knight in Grave as well. So pretty strong opening board right there. Let's check out a different test hand. Give it some shuffles on camera for you guys. Do my little cut routine if I don't throw my entire deck everywhere. Pass it to you guys to cut. You guys choose to cut it there, and then another random cut, yada, yada, yada. Draw our five cards. And let's see what we have. We got the Crow, the Nib, Double Nib, Kotal, and Prosperity. Let's go ahead and Prosperity. And remember how I said that I kept my extra deck set up. We do have full combo in hand, but I would like a cross out just to be safe. So without looking, I'm going to do the top three because of how I set it up. And we will see. Let's see. I did get the cross out. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that. Now we have a little bit of extra protection there. Prosperity is in the grave. Now we can go ahead and Kotal. It sucks. We run two nibs. We drew both, but it is fine. We've done things in this video using just one card with four random. So it doesn't really matter if you get a bricky hand like that. As long as you have something and don't just full force brick. Kotal's effect is going to grab us Mirror Sword Knight. You know, normal Mirror Sword Knight, use his effect. That is going to special summon the boy. Big Wing Burfamit. Activate his effect, they hand trap you there, we will cross out it. Go ahead and grab the Gazelle and the Chimera Fusion. We're going to activate the Chimera Fusion. Gazelle from hand, Big Wing Burfament. For the Chimera, the King of Phantom Beast. Now we have Chain Links. Chain Link 1, Burfament. Target Mirror Sword Knight. Chain Link 2, Gazelle. Chain Link 3, Chimera. That's going to let us rip a card during the end phase. In resolution, let's go Chain Link 3. Chain Link 2 is Gazelle. We are going to add, what are we missing in here? We have a Kotal and a Mirror Sword Knight. So we'll go ahead and act, add another Mirror Sword Knight. It's right there on the bottom. Big Wing Burfamet's target, which was the Mirror Sword Knight, will special summon. And now we are back here. Now we can go ahead and activate Chimera Fusion to add back. Set Chimera Fusion and we pass with a pretty good amount of disruptions i mean if they get through everything if they get through if we activate this and resolve that or even if we don't resolve it as long as he ends up in the grave we have two interruptions there cornfield kotal and mirror sword knight as long as they don't do something like kaiju this guy right here so we have those interruptions once he's in the grave we don't have an interruption necessarily but we do have stuff we can do with him and then we, of course, have a Chimera Fusion to get into Guardian Chimera. For that disruption, we have a DD Crow and a Nib. If all else fails, we do still have the Nib. So pretty solid hand and board right there as well. Let's go ahead and look at just one more, since it's all basically the same thing, but it just helps seeing it with extra cards in the hand. Shuffle it real good this time so I don't get double Nib. Okay, shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. Do my cut routine. This will be the last test hand. Give it to you guys to cut. You say thirds this time. I'll do a final cut. You guys do the final cut as well. And let's see what we got. Ash, Big Wing, Fenrir, and Book of Moon. Not an ideal hand, and this happens way more than you would think. I mean, just in this video, this is one out of the three hands that we've done, and there's not really much we can do about it, to be honest, but we do have Fenrir, which is good. This is the exact reason why he's in the deck in the first place. So we can special Fenrir and activate his effect to Cert and just hope that they play some sort of hand trap on that because then we have talents to draw to. And then our end board would be that and then set this with another Fenrir in hand. But let's say they do hand trap, let's say they Ash that. We'll talent and we can either take, or I'm sorry, not take, we're going first. We can either rip one from their hand, or what we can do is draw two. Let's see what happens if we draw two. We got a Chimera Fusion and we got a Branded Fusion. There we go. So now we actually have something. So they've already used an Ash this turn. Imperm wouldn't hurt Branded Fusion. Let's go ahead and activate Branded Fusion. We're going to fuse with a Gazelle and a Fallen of Albaz. Those three are going to get us into Rindbrum. Now, Gazelle's effect is going to add an illusion monster from deck to hand. That's where we will go ahead and grab the Kotal. Discard the Kotal for the Mirror Sword Knight. Normal summon Mirror Sword Knight. Activate Mirror Sword Knight's effect to special out the boy himself. Now that he's out, he's level 5, which is really unfortunate, but if he was level 4, he'd be way too OP. We'll activate his effect, grab us a Chimera Fusion and a Gazelle. And then we will activate Chimera Fusion. And we will do the two from hand, actually. So these two guys, boom. And that will get us into Chimera, the King of Phantom Beasts. 
Now we do have some chain links we can do. We are going to go uh, Big Wing Burfamet. We've already used Gazelle this turn. So Big Wing Burfamet's effect, chain link one, and then Chimera the King, chain link two. Burfamet targeting Mirror Sword Knight, of course. So we will go into Mirror Sword Knight there. And then of course, we'll rip a card during the end phase. Technically that happened and then this happened, but it's fine. We'll activate Chimera Fusion to add back. Now that Chimera Fusion is in our hand again, I mean, that's our second one. We can set that. We have two options here. We can either go into the big guy preemptively, but he doesn't do much on field during your opponent's turn. They'd have to attack him, I guess. So I don't see a real reason to actually do that. But Chimera Fusion is set. And we have some interruption here as well. So we can, we are fully set up to go into a pretty monstrous Guardian Chimera. Can, counting what's in our hand and on the field, it's just absolutely insane. Set a Book of Moon. So we have Ash. So we have Ash in hand, Fenrir on field. We have Kotal in grave. Mirror Sword Knight will be engraved during the draw phase if we want or whenever we see fit. We have Renbrum. We have a Book of Moon and then a way into Guardian Chimera. This is just an outrageous hand right here. This is so far overextending, but I just wanted to show you guys what you could do. Absolutely insane. But anyway, that is going to be it for the video. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will catch you guys next time.